uh, introduction. So let's get started with uh, today's uh, topic. So I'll start sharing my screen. Yeah, is it visible? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Sir. Let's go with the slideshow. Give me a moment. Is it visible? Uh, yes, ma'am. Awesome. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, good evening, one and all. So today we will be discussing more about uh, naturopathy as uh, one of the best tools for maintaining good health, also well-being. Okay, so now we'll go with the definition of uh, naturopathy. So naturopathy, we have a traditional uh, definition and uh, one of the best uh, definitions from American Association of Naturopathic Physicians as well. Okay, so when we say about naturopathy, so it is a system of man building in harmony with constructive principles of nature on physical, mental, and moral planes of being. So it was uh, defined by uh, Henry Lindler. So now we can know that health depends on in physical, mental, and moral planes. So we have three planes of being where we have to be well balanced in harmony with the nature. Okay, now the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians have also given a beautiful uh, definition which says it is a distinct system of medicine of primary health care because naturopathy is not like it became a system of medicine, but first we would call it as a kind of a living, you know, the way we have to live the day to day, you know, your dinacharya, what, what we call it. how you live your day to day life is what we are speaking about more in naturopathy or nature care. Okay, so it is an art, science, philosophy, and practice of diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and also the prevention of illness. Okay, so now we say there is also diagnosis, there is also treatment, and there is also prevention of illness along with the way of living or your lifestyle. Okay, now here in naturopathy, we have... 10 basic principles when we say we are uh, giving, I mean, following naturopathy or a treatment, we have 10 basic principles that comes under the naturopathy. So first we say that the body heals by itself. The best example is a wound, isn't it? So we, when we have a cut, you, you apply turmeric or if you don't apply turmeric, it heals by itself, isn't it? So the first thing is the body heals itself. Second one is the main cause of disease is enervation. Enervation is exhaustion. Like, you know, you are draining out yourself. It may be emotional. It may be about even your nutrition. It may be in the physical level or in the mental level that there is enervation. Then the third principle is accumulation of morbid matters cause the disease. So we always say that bacteria are not the primary cause of disease. It is the environment that you give within your body that causes these bacteria to grow. Example, we have bacteria of tuberculosis, we have cancer cells, we have everything inside our body. Until and unless you don't give a favorable atmosphere for the bacterial growth, it doesn't pops up into any symptoms of disease. Okay, so the acute disease in itself is the remedial process. Like I have, uh, the best example I can give you is about, you know, a small, a common cold that we get. If you give yourself three days of rest, you know, probably do fasting or be on some kashayas or some decoctions, which help, you know, the phlegm or the digestive system to recuperate, the body heals by itself. So acute disease is better not to be suppressed with any medication because acute disease, the body is saying, you know, like a child cries, the body is trying to say, uh, see, I have a problem. That is the reason I'm showing you some symptoms. Please give me some rest. Okay. So next one, the fifth principle is germs don't cause disease, but they are found in diseased condition. So when we say germs don't cause disease, see, we are made up of millions and trillions of bacteria. You have good bacteria, you have bad bacteria, you know, the gut health, when we speak about gut health, it's, it's an ocean, it's, it's a very vast topic when we speak about gut health. So germs don't cause the disease, but it is found in disease condition. Example is a urinary tract infection. I can give you the best example like this, like you drink less water. Okay, when we drink less water, the bladder heaters more, then it slowly there is 
of growth of the acid fast bacilli in the urinary bladder, which precipitates into a urinary tract infection. So the bacteria is already there, but you give a favorable atmosphere of either eating spicy food, not drinking good lot of water, then it may precipitate into a disease or a symptom or a group of symptoms. Okay. So the next one is food is the building material, but does not increase vitality. This is the most important since the COVID times, we've been you know, always discussing about vitality, immunity and all that. When we say about vitality, it means it is Vitality is always misunderstood as immunity. No, immunity is totally a different subject and vitality is a totally, you know, different subject. Vitality is the ogis, you know, the inner essence of what you have. You can't say, I am having the best in nutrition, like A to Z. You go to, I mean, you either you have a health issue or you are normal. You go to a dietitian or any one of us, any one of the doctors and ask us, give me a good diet chart. I give you. Uh, the best, you know, according the best diet chart, according to the season, according to the place you live, according to your prakriti, if I give you, it doesn't mean you are increasing your vitality. So vitality is the inner essence that is born with, you know, you're born with that vitality. And you can improve that only with meditation, a good lifestyle, maybe yoga, bhyasa you know, drinking good lot of water, balanced. It is all about the inner essence, the energy that is balanced inside gives you a good vitality at the end of the day. Then fasting doesn't cure the disease, but create the environment to heal. So fasting, when we say, you know, like we have uh, uh, Ekadashi, every month, you know, we have Ekadashi. So this Ekadashi is meant, Ekadashi fasting is one of the, you know, the best fasting days because naturally we don't feel hungry on that day. So the Ekadasi Upavasa or Ekadasi fasting, which is done is always, you know, a, a welcome factor in, in our tradition. So fasting, it gives like you are giving a rest to your digestive system and allowing that to work on the inner, uh, you know, healing, inner healing, or there is a disease or you want to work on your health, uh, any aspect or maintain health then fasting is the best one. So what I would suggest in a fasting is like you, 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 you say you feel weekly once, uh, some patients, you know, they tell me weekly once I have to do fasting. How do I plan my fast? How do I make it more, you know, more than the religious kind of fasting? They would ask me, how do I uh, harness the benefits of fasting? I would say, see, like you want to do a Thursday fasting or a Saturday or a Sunday fasting. First, what you do is, have a balanced food, you know, like every day you have some balanced food, some liquids and all, so that like it may be in the form of juices, it may be tender coconut water, it may be buttermilk, it may be anything, you know, you, you, you have some solids, balance it with liquids, so that at least three days prior fasting, so that it helps you to flush out the toxins or the end products of metabolism that is there in your body. So, okay, so fasting, we can use it for, again, you know, like, you know, we said, it can be used as a treatment, it can be used as a way of living, it depends on, you know, how you want to utilize that tool of fasting. So next, it would be external treatments like allopathy, like uh, gives only the relief to the body, but do not cure the disease. Like, you know, I say, uh, it may probably heal, you know, the symptoms may go, but still the body type is the same, isn't it? Whatever you are inside is the same. It is not different. Now I haven't, I have taken a medicine, but it has only reduced the symptom, but not the original cause or the causative factor of the disease. So it is always better not to suppress your symptoms with any medicines until and unless you know it is an emergency, but still work on detoxing your body under balanced food. Then patients own will to get well determination and faith are very necessary for nature cure, isn't it? So now it is not that, you know, I'm sorry, it is not that, that uh, uh, you come to a, a hospital or, you know, a 10 day retreat of you know, yoga or naturopathy, and then you say everything I, you know, I want to get, you do it for me. The patient has to do it with his or her own will because there is a series of uh, you know things that happens in your mind like either you are given fasting it may be yoga it may be any therapy it may be some treatments you have to involve yourself from your 
mind and heart along with the physical body. So it is all about the inner essence. Okay, so these are the 10 basic principles of naturopathic medicine. Next, next we have five elements. One of the most important uh, you know, concepts which we use in naturopathic medicine. So it is ether, earth, fire, air, and water, or prithvi, ap, jal, vayu, and akash. So here, what is that human body? You know, when we say about these five elements, how are these five elements in our human body represented? Isn't it? So Prithvi or the earth, it is about the bone and the muscle. Then when we say about Aap, then it is blood and lymph. Is it? Tej, then it is about fire, which is about the metabolism, you know, the Golgai operators, which we speak about. Vayu, it is about lungs and that is air. Akash, when we say it is ether and it is related to the digestive system. So this is how the five elements are represented in our uh, human body, which we call it as the Panchabhatika Sharir. So now we have the Panchakoshas. I, I just have a question here. Yes, please. Uh, it's written Prithvi and uh, in the up, previous. Up part. is water. Up is water, is it? Okay, okay. Yes. I was I was checking those things. Yes, Aligning up the... is water. No, 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 no. It is okay. not. There are two different images. Okay, okay, okay. The okay, two different you. images. Thank you. Okay. okay, so now I have just bought a small glimpse of Panchakoshas because, you know, this Panchakosha theory is very important for us to understand here. When I say about health and well-being, uh, you know, this health and well-being is so volatile, like it is, you know, like all the five elements, they are, you know, in the morning, there is a small uh, permutation combination by afternoon it is more with time with day and night slowly you know it changes there is a small plateau of up and down so the panchakoshas when we say about so the balance of the panchakoshas the pancha mahabhutas all that together can be constituted as health as a health so when there is an imbalance we can call it as a disease or probably going to be uh, going to slowly turn into a same group of symptoms and then a full blown a disease. Okay, so first we go with the Annamaya Kosha. So Annamaya Kosha, you have it is the physical body, you know, what we see your uh, what you call it may be your whole, you know, the gross structure, what we can call. So that is the Annamaya Kosha, which can constitute of your cells or you know, your muscles, your arteries, veins, bones, and all that gross things they constitute the Annamaya Kosha. Next is the Pranamaya Kosha. When we say about Pranamaya Kosha, it is the energy sheet. So what is that energy? You know, this physical body is driven by energy. Isn't it? The physical body is driven by energy. Until and unless, you know, you, you don't have the driving energy. You know, when a person is alive, we say Pran, you know, the life force or the Chi is there. When a person is dead, you give him oxygen, you give him food, you give him water, you give him what not. Until and unless the prana, you know, that is there in you, the chi, the life force, whatever you call it, it is there, you are alive. So the pranamaya kosha is the most important one between your mind and the body. So we, we can, you know, you see here in the, in the uh, thing, in, on the image, you can see aura, electromagnetic energy field, the chakras, nadis, prana, chi, ki, whatever you name it, it is there in the pranamaya kosha. So the next would be the manomaya kosha. Please excuse me for the spelling mistake there. It is manomaya kosha, M-A-N-O, M-A-Y-A, manomaya kosha which is all about the mind, emotions, thinking, feelings, fears, doubts, motivations, you name them, it is that. So whatever happens in the mind drives the pranic force there. Like example, now all of us here, you know, whoever are attending this, our whole energy and the mind, you know, the prana and the mind is all here. You know, we are focusing on something. It is basically the left brain activity, isn't it? That is happening, the intellectual thing that is happening now. We are hearing to something. We are trying to, you know, remember something or probably write something and trying to remember it, isn't it? So the mind. So the mind is, if you want to drive the physical body, it is driven by the mind through the prana. 
Okay, so you have the prana flowing towards if you want to focus. It is not you. It is not Jyoti. It is not Rashmi. It is it is you know it is B. You know it is this. The brain comes into picture. The brain draws energy. The brain draws blood. And the functions, you know, the brain centers are uh, supported with all these, and then it starts doing its work. Okay, next we come to Vignana Maya Kosha. It is called the wisdom. Wisdom, higher consciousness, intellect, values, intuition. But here, when, when uh, you know, we speak about health and well being, I want to bring uh, a beautiful concept of this Vignana Maya Kosha. You know what happens is this Vignana Maya Kosha is it, it tells us like you know you are having fever you you have a feeling to eat something spicy something fried and all this Vignana Maya Kosha will tell you see it is not good don't eat it you know you are you are having fever this tries to give you that wisdom you know the Vignana Maya Kosha tries to give you the the logical reasoning but your Mano Maya Kosha the mind the emotions take over this and say are koi baat nahi it's okay you leave it today I'm going to have and probably after that take some medicine. So this is what, so Vignana Maya Kosha is very important, not only in health and be, well-being, but also in every aspect in our day-to-day -day lives where, you know, you have values, you know, the most important, you have some discipline, you have some values, you know, all that. So in that case, what happens is this Vignana Maya Kosha is a very important asset for us. We need to channel the energy from here also. So next comes the Ananda Maya Kosha. It is called the bliss where you are, you know, happy and connection to the collective unconscious God, divine spark within. So when I say about, see, uh, in, in uh, therapy, uh, we use Anandamaya Kosha like bhajans, you know. Bhajans are, are the best therapy where you can, especially in depression, in anxiety, in, you know, um, where you have certain diseases, you know, where it is related to mind and melancholy and all that. The Anandamaya Kosha, the bhajans play a very important role. Probably any one of you here can try this. Whenever you are feeling sad, uh, pick up one of the bhajans, you know, which is like, you know, uh, which does have a high pitch and a low pitch and a high pitch and a low pitch. Okay, the frequency of that, you know, the bhajan, it will just drive out all the negative emotions with that up, down, up, down, you sing with that. And I bet on, I think there are some research papers also on this integrative therapy, the Panchakosha therapy. There is a beautiful uh, paper probably from PubMed. I'll just uh, post it to uh, Rashmi ji and she will just post the link here on the Facebook page. Beautiful, you know, bhajans and this Vignana Maya Kosha, all these working together in harmony is called health and well-being, a homeostasis, like, you know, mind, we will not know, like, there is an event, there is, there is some, you know, pain or something going on, you, we will not know to what extent we are digging in at that moment, you know, we should be very careful when we spend our emotions on something, you know, you can see money, you know, people are very careful about, you know, spending money, where should I invest it, how should I invest it, and where do I get the returns? But people, very few uh, people know the importance of investing emotions in the right place. You can't, because you're not able to see or perceive or calculate it, doesn't mean that you're investing your emotions elsewhere, right? Isn't it? You're spending, you're spending your emotional energies. But do you have any practice in your day-to-day -day life that is refueling all these? Do you practice meditation? Do you practice pranayama? or anything where you have invested something, are you refueling like money you spent? Okay, you earn and you, you know, it comes, your bank balance or wherever it, is, it comes back. But what about the mind, isn't it? So you should have some practice for your own self uh, every day, I would call it as, where you can balance the energy, the mind and the ananda, you know? So that is that was that is one of the reasons that I got this Panchakosha slide into our topic today. So next we go to Panchatantra. So there are five. I, if you don't mind, I just have one small. Uh, even the audience might be having this question. Please. So on behalf of the audience, I'm asking, please go to the previous slide. Mm -hmm. uh, so here you said that uh, Vignanamaya Kosha will guide us. It's the wisdom. Yes. And uh, Manomaya Kosha will actually uh, influence us, you know? Yes. So it's a very thin line between the two. So how do we, 
uh, understand what is guiding us. Is it the Vignana Maya Kosha or the Mano Maya Kosha? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. I will tell you. See, the Mano Maya Kosha is the one where you have feelings, you know. It is basically, we can put it as the right brain and the left brain activity. You know, more about intellectual, more about emotions. Here, yeah, Vignana Maya is the one, like you have a thought, let's say, uh, today I have, uh, today I want to skip a class or something like that, isn't it? See, it's that is an emotion you are having. That thought you are having, I want to skip the class today. Example, you wanted to go somewhere or conduct something. Now, it is only a thought in the Manomaya Kosha. When the thought is strong, the Vignanamaya Kosha will come to give you a counteract uh, or a counter thought that this is right or wrong. You only have to be patient and calm, only listen to yourself. Okay, so the trigger happens through the Manomaya Kosha first. And yes. It triggers something and yes. then you have to be silent to understand what your, what your inner guidance will give you. Yes, exactly. And that comes with either a regular practice of pranayama or meditation. Silence is the best one where you know what is going on inside you, isn't it? Like today, you, you, you got this thought now, isn't it? First, I told you, your mind was listening to that. Then there is some doubt. This is the Vignanamaya Kosha, which told you, what is this? You know, there is a question. You want to dig deep into that thought, that is Vignanamaya Kosha, which tells you this is right and this is wrong. It is left to, again, the mind to follow what is right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah, beautiful. Thank it, you. It is. It is a cycle of thoughts. That's it. Is a, it that happens. You only have to stick to what is right. If you are calm enough, it will come back, and you can go according to the guidance. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll go now. We have pancha tantra. So pancha means five, and tantra is the rule. So when I say about five rules, so it says you know for the preservation of health. Okay, so now we have Dr. Uh, Venkatra, who is one of the greatest pioneers in naturopathy in India. And he has given us this, two meals a day, drink two seers of water per day, one hour exercise per day, prayer twice a day, and fasting once a week. So when I say, are everyone eligible for this two meals a day? Like today, okay, today we have heard about this. Then to tonight you will feel, why don't I start doing it from tomorrow? No, it cannot happen. You have to come back. You know, you have to tell yourself, prepare your body for that. Take a week. First practice, you know, uh, take start, I mean, start with taking good lot of juices in the morning. Take one, you know, take first breakfast. After that, you feel when is your hunger, you know, when is when do you have the next appetite? Because your body is used to your uh, daily routine. Just because Jyoti fell today, Okay, she has to start from two meals from tomorrow. It is wrong. You have to meet any of the, you know, Ayurveda or naturopathy physicians where they will guide you properly. You know, first you have to have that liquids. Slowly prepare your body and you have to have nutrition. When you are eating two meals a day, there is a specific lifestyle that has to be followed. Probably that I can... Uh, uh, in, in our classes in the future when we'll be conducting, we'll be going in depth about who can have two meals a day, why should you have two meals a day and what is the lifestyle that they should follow. Okay, these are only the principles that you are uh, learning now, which is there in naturopathy, but when you have to imbibe or inculcate it in your own life, you have to meet a doctor who can guide you, you know, the right way. So then drink two years of water, two years of water per day. All these principles, one hour exercise. See, for our lifestyle now, where we have a lot of sitting, I would say we at least need this one hour in the morning and half an hour, you know, uh, after you, after your work. We've been sitting all the day. Everything is stuck, your energy, your blood is all scattered. So at the end of the day, if you can go for a walk, you know, or do some stretches or something. No, I don't want you to do something that is very heavy, isn't it? It is the basic uh, purpose of us doing yoga and, you know, exercise all at yoga, exercise workouts, whatever you have, whatever we have or plan is basically to improve the blood circulation to each and every organ from the top of the head to the tip of your toes. Along with that, 
you should have every joint active you know every doors you have a latch you lock it there is some sound some screeching sound you pour oil the same way you should have nourishment got it so this is the reason you have exercises i've been sitting you know like morning i've been walking it is fine but if my job is is to sit for 4 or 5 hours just think where would the metabolism you know it would come low isn't it so slow you are eating the right kind of food but your metabolism is low you put on weight isn't it so that makes sense uh, where we can change this panchatantras according to your lifestyle prayer twice a day see prayer i, I have a beautiful uh, rashmi is it okay i extend for 5 minutes it is 7 yes please yeah yeah is that okay i have i think uh, last one slide left yeah no problem no problem so uh, when i say about prayer prayer in any any religion is very important because we have something called as the sympathetic and the parasympathetic okay so what happens is when you start the day with your prayer you are totally relaxing yourself see even we have a tradition of doing prayer even before food in every religion i believe so we have uh, the tradition of doing a prayer you know we thank god for for the food which has been given today so it means that you are switching off from the sympathetic active mode to the parasympathetic that is the relaxing mode when you are in the parasympathetic mode your stomach you know your digestion all is all you know it is in a pause your digestion everything you know there is pupillary dilatation because you i am working i i i need that isn't it so now when you switch on yourself to a prayer mode then you come to the parasympathetic phase you have a small prayer before your lunch in your office not to be a loud prayer it is only to switch off from the work mode to this physical and the inner body your mind and make yourself aware of what you are eating you know the mindful eating the concept of mindful eating then again you know after that you have your food then wash your hands and then you can just thank and thank for you know for the lunch and pray that it is digested well again go back to your working mode this is what the brain the energy the mind needs you know telling making you feel that that's the reason we say don't watch you know when you are watching tv don't have your food you are not able to you know eat you know your, your tongue is not able to feel the brain is not able to know what kind of juices have to be secreted down in your stomach okay so then fasting once a week i told you you have to take some guidance before you start fasting once in a week then you you have treatments do we have we have mat therapy hydrotherapy massage atapasnana then you have sona bath you have uh, the oxygen uh, zone then fasting therapy and the diet therapy then so that is what we have and what are the benefits of naturopathy treatment it is disease prevention it helps in you know you have all the therapeutic one because you know the body is made up of pancha mahabhutas and disease is an imbalance in this so we are trying to uh, any disease you know you can you can name the disease and you will be better until and unless it is some cancer or something where things are really beyond control all uh, you know the basic you know diabetes all that the stress related are taken care of then it improves body's own healing yes because a detox is done treatment by traditional medicine and it connects you with your in your yourself because you know we are working at all the pancha you know the kosha levels every treatment for uh, probably for the mind you have meditation pranayama all that okay so here we come to the end of the slide hope i have um, you know enlightened you something about naturopathy and its principles uh, thank you very much for your patient here